Bronze The mankind always strives for something new. As well as now, we are piercing the mysteries, the universe. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors were exploring the earth, inhabiting new territories for hunting, livestock breeding, and agriculture. Making more and more technological inventions, a breakthrough in metal processing has become one of the key points in development of budding civilizations. This technology turned out to be so significant that a new century of humankind was named after it. The Age of Bronze In the board game Bronze, you will lead ancient nations and will help them settle the territory of the Earth using the Bronze Age inventions. The board is made up of vertical tiles. The starting tile divides it into horizontal terrains, each of which is given its symbol. On land tiles, there are spots for settlements of three types, for farmers, herders, and hunters. Players use technology cards to set up settlements and occupy space on the board. Each technology allows you to build settlements of certain types on certain terrains. There are seven technology types in the game. On the card, we see information about the technology name, the type of terrain and settlement, as well as the minimum number of players required to use this card. On the backs of all cards, there is a universal technology, Bronze Casting. It is a wild card that allows you to set up any settlement on any terrain. During the game, players will get city cards. At the end of the game, these cards bring them victory points if certain conditions are met. Province tokens and trade route tokens also bring victory points. Province tokens go to those players who have the majority of settlements on a land tile. And trade route tokens are received for a continuous line of settlements. Game Setup To start a game, place the starting tile in the middle of the table. Add random land tiles on its right, placing them face down depending on the number of players. Put the remaining land tiles back into the box without looking at them. Flip the required number of land tiles depending on the number of players. Each player chooses a color and gets 30 settlement markers of the respective color. Place one random province token above each land tile. The remaining province tokens are not used in the game. Let's form a game pool. In a two-player game, only cards with two pawns are used. In a three-player game, cards with three pawns are added. And in a four-player game, all cards must be used. Shuffle technology cards and divide them into five stacks face down as equally as possible. Turn the top cards of any four stacks face up. These stacks are now called a game pool. The fifth stack is a reserve stack. When any of the game pool stacks comes to an end, put the reserve stack in its place, turning its top card face up. Place trade route tokens to the left of the starting tile, according to the corresponding terrains. 10 point tokens on the left, then 6 point and 3 point tokens on the far side. For a 2 or 3 player game, return the city cards that are not used with this number of players to the box. They are marked with pawns similar to technology cards. Shuffle the stack of city cards and place them face down next to the board. Choose the first player at random. He takes the first player token and keeps it until the end of the game. The first player takes his turn, which then proceeds clockwise. Gameplay A player's turn consists of four phases. First, technology card draw. Second, activation of technology cards. Third, settlements placement. Fourth, trade routes in province. Let's see a detailed description of the player's turn. First of all, a player chooses the top technology card from any stack of the game pool. Note, once the player has taken the card, he turns the next one in this stack face up. The player must decide which face of the card to use, front or back. The player places cards into four relative vertical columns in front of him, creating a technology matrix of his people. Each column is built from top to bottom, without any blinks. There can be any number of any technology cards in a column. When a technology card is placed, the player can place it into the existing column, strictly under its bottom card. 
or start a new column, to the left or to the right from the top card. In the player's technology matrix, there cannot be more than four columns. The player cannot change the allocation of technology cards already in the matrix. Placing a technology card, the player activates it, gains an opportunity to set up one settlement on the board using this technology. At the same time, other cards in the player's technology matrix become active as well, cards of the same technology in the same column, as well as cards to the left and to the right from the placed one. Technology on the back side of all cards, bronze casting, is an exception and does not activate other cards of bronze casting in the same column. However, bronze casting is activated by another technology placed next to it as per the usual rules. For each card activated during this turn, the player can place one settlement marker on an unoccupied spot on the game board. The type of this spot and the terrain must meet the conditions set by the activated card. If the player activates several cards during a turn, he may set up the settlements in any order. Also, the player may choose not to place settlements for one or several activated cards. The player may put settlement cubes on any open land tiles. However, once he occupies at least one spot on the next land tile, he may no longer set up settlements on the previous land tiles. The player has the right to put all future settlements either on this land tile or the new ones. Inside the land tile, settlements may be put in any order. When the player sets up a settlement on the land tile, to the right of which there is a face-down land tile, he turns this land tile face up. After that, he may set up the remaining settlements on the previous land tile or move forward to the just open tile has no other settlements yet except for the first land tile, he immediately draws cards from the city deck depending on the number of players. The player puts these cards face up on the table below the respective land tile, and then chooses one of them and puts it face up in front of him. If the player sets up a settlement on the land tile where he has no settlements yet but other players do, he takes one of the opened city cards next to his land tile and puts it face up in front of him. The player may gain only one city on each land tile. The city cards that were not picked up are discarded. As soon as the player builds a continuous line of three of his settlements in one terrain, he immediately gets the respective trade route token with number three and three victory points. The player does not get a token if another player has it. Pay attention. A continuous line is a line not interrupted by other players' settlements. Unoccupied spots do not interrupt the line. Even if such a line is later interrupted by a competitor, the player will not need to return his token. The player gets a token of higher value if he has built a continuous line of 5 and 7 settlements respectively. Once the player gets such a token, he must return the token of a lower value for the same terrain if he has one onto the table. The player does not get a token of a lower value if he already has a token of a higher value for the same terrain. As soon as all players leave any of the land tiles, which means each of them has a settlement to the right of this land tile, supremacy is defined within it. The player who definitely has more settlements on this land tile than any other competitor takes the province token. If there is a draw, no one takes the province token. The game can end in three ways. If a player runs out of settlement markers, if there are no spots for settlement left on the last land tile, if two stacks of technology cards run out. After that, the round is played until the last player. Then competitors count the score and the one who has the highest sum of victory points wins the game. Scoring. On those land tiles that were reached by the players and that still have province tokens, it is required to define supremacy and pass the token to the player who definitely has more settlements on it than each of the competitors. If neither on the land tile nor to the right of it there are no settlements of at least one player, no one gets the province token for this terrain. Victory points are gained for province tokens, trade route tokens, and city cards if corresponding conditions were met. The player with the majority of victory points wins in the game. If there is a draw,
players consecutively compare the numbers of victory points gained for city cards, trade route tokens, and province tokens. The first player to have an advantage in one of these categories is the winner. If there is an absolute draw, players share the victory.